Hey witches, it's Lee and this is Do The Magical Thing and I thought we'd have a little chat about cleansing because it's one of those things, you know, you hear a lot about it in the witchcraft community, there's lots of blogs and, you know, posts and all this sort of stuff about it, but do we really talk about it in depth? Is it kind of like stretching is to exercise, do you know what I mean? Is it that thing that we kind of skip through to try and get to the good juicy bit that we actually want to do? I feel like that's sometimes the case and I think that what you'll hopefully get from this is a nice deep dive, a look at what other people are saying, but also to look at creating a ritual really for cleansing itself and making it a ritual act of itself, not just part of another ritual, right? Make it really whole and something that you can really get your witchy powers into and explore it, stretch out that sort of uh, that cleansing act if you like. Now, with cleansing, you know, the, the clue is really in the name. It's about clean, right? But it, the term to cleanse normally means a more focused, kind of ritualised form of cleaning, if you like. And what are we cleaning or what are we cleansing? Well, we're cleansing ourselves and our belongings and our surroundings. And why do you want to do that? Well, through time and through, through use and through exposure to elements and other such things, these things become unclean. And if something's unclean, you know, think about your dishes, think about whatever it might be, it can make you sick, yeah, it can make you unwell. And this could be mentally, physically, spiritually. And so really cleansing is one of those things that we do oftentimes before we're about to do something else. Maybe if we're going out, we might cleanse ourselves to go out. Maybe if we're, you know, doing, undertaking a particular activity, we might cleanse ourselves before we do that activity. So really it becomes a bit of a social act. And if you think about what we're doing at the moment, all of us, you know, we're getting the hand sanitizer, aren't we? And, and we're we're making it something that is a, a community act. It's something that we're doing to benefit others. And and really that's something that is a cleansing. It's a, it's a wonderfully brilliant way of combining the mundane and the magical. Every time you put your sanitizer on your hands, you know, it's a magical act. So with the cleansing being a social act, you know, what are we trying to do? We're trying to make ourselves feel comfortable. We're trying to make ourselves, you know, through that sense of comfort, you know, through that sense of comfort, you're really looking at being relaxed, being present, you know. If you're going out somewhere and you know you haven't washed, every now and then you're like, am I, am I, am I, am I stinking up the place over here, <laughs> right? So it's, it makes it obvious and makes it much easier to go, right, let's get my clean, you know, let's get myself clean, then I can go out and then I don't have to worry about that thing. I just have to worry about social interaction, which is a whole other ball game, isn't it? But when you're doing that sort of thing, you know, it's that relaxing, that being present, being able to sort of just be, there and you know that's so important magically because we want to be there we want to be present when we're in our rituals when we're creating whatever it is we want to create when we want that focus and that can be hard to come by sometimes if you're cleansed you're prepared so it's definitely that kind of it's, it's almost like an energetic eraser isn't it it kind of rewrites the past a little bit whatever you've got on you it rewrites it and you know let's do a little bit of a thought experiment right Imagine you're uh, a book, right, and you're lent out every day into the world. Now, when you get taken out of the library that is your home, your safe space, wherever that might be, when you're taken out, maybe you end up in a smoky environment and, you know, you're finding it a bit hard to breathe. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you get dropped in the shit, right? Maybe it's that some people take a highlighter to your pages and try and highlight something that you, you really didn't want to be pointed out. Maybe someone actually makes notes in the margin of you as this book and they're kind of trying to overwrite your actual narrative. And you're like, oh. You know, and then when you get back to the, the library, you know, that like is your home, that is your space of whatever form that might be, then you can be in a bit, you know, a bit of a state, really. Maybe that shit you were dropped in earlier is starting to stink, you know, if it's something that's sort of clinging to you, maybe uh, that those words that were written in, maybe you're thinking, oh, did I write them or, or is that part of me or is that something that is someone else projecting that onto me? You know, this stuff really kind of gets to you, it sort of clings on like this film almost. Now, the thing is, if you get lent out again into the world the next day without any attention or towards that, towards cleansing, then it's going to be just a build up upon build up upon build up, right? And, you know, attitudes will change, your behaviour will change. So the thing to remember is you're not just the book, yeah, lent out into the world, you're the librarian, 
yeah so you can take yourself to one side in the library of your home your space and you can really give yourself a bit of tlc you know cleanse yourself down do a few repairs here and there and really get yourself ready and fresh so that you are clear on your purpose so that you're not being pulled and stuck to stuff that actually isn't you you know really what you want to be is congruent and clear-headed and or at least as clear as you can be in whatever form maybe you you know you're neurodiverse and that's fine do you know what i mean but basically what you want to do is at least have a base level wherever that base level hits if it varies but that's not stuck with all these kind of attachments and things like that yeah and so for me I feel like cleansing is that kind of thing that we can think about in terms of ourselves but not just that in terms of our tools because when you think about using tools if it's grimy if it's rusty you know is that easy to work with not really that goes for mundane tools as much as it does magical yeah and the same with space if you're in a space that is cluttered and you're tripping over you know bits and bobs and you know i'm not the tidiest person myself but i always find it much easier to do workings in a clear space a clear environment because there's less peripheral noise and you know that's something that I think a lot of folks benefit from. You know, if you're in a cluttered home, you feel crowded in, it's all this sort of closed inness. And really, cleansing is about, you know, that expressing ourselves and having the room to manoeuvre, but also kind of pressing that reset. Like I say, it's a sort of energetic eraser. And I really love the sort of concept of kind of pressing rewind a little bit on the day, or at least rewinding any kind of energy that's stuck to us or getting rid of it, you know? So when you're thinking about these kind of uh, these kind of words, cleansing and and you know all this sort of stuff, I think it's always worth looking at our peers, our witchy peers, our friends and and uh, inspirational peeps who are in our witchy lives. And there's a few things that folks have to say. So in terms of let's have a look, cleansing, we have protection spells by Aaron Murphy Hiscock. Now, Aaron Murphy Hiscock is somebody who's written quite a you know, number of books. And uh, what I quite like about it is they tend to word things pretty simply. And I think they have some... They do tend to go into the etymology of things. So that's quite cool. Now, they say to purify or sometimes to cleanse something means to remove or transform the negative or undesired energy from it. Cleansing is more often used to describe the physical level of transformation or purification can refer to the energy state. They are used interchangeably here until specified uh, or less specified because the physical state impacts the energy of an object or space. I think that's quite important, isn't it? You think about purification versus cleansing. Cleansing being physical, purification being more spiritual, perhaps. I think cleansing can work either way, but that's definitely a nice way to look at it in terms of separating it out. Another person who talks about different terms is Deborah Lip. Now, you remember from earlier videos that I like their book a lot, Magical Power for Beginners. It's something that is a good primer for understanding really how to direct your energy and such like. And they say when you consecrate an object, so they use the term consecrate, when you consecrate an object, it can de declare that segregation and begin the process of separating out that particular sort of energy. So consecration, cleansing, really just a more kind of specifically holy term, if you like, a more religious or practice a kind of really a term that is very much associated with ritual regardless of whether it's religious or not but i think it's really interesting that kind of separating it out because ultimately you know when we're cleansing we're either removing debris we're making it safe for use we're getting rid of any kind of attachments um and and really we're sort of looking at, at starting afresh like i say that magical eraser and also with with separating it out this is now cleansed it is not unclean it's something that is specifically clean now for a purpose generally right so they continue on saying that that's not all a consecration does of course in general it's a cleansing a removing energy that is unwanted or unconnected to the tool's purpose it also brings energy into the object now i think that's really interesting about energy into the object i would say that's a, technically a separate act but 
you know, I think that's definitely something that is worth moving on to perhaps in another discussion. When it says about unwanted or unconnected uh, things, that energy that's, you know, you're removing, I think that's really key as well because maybe you get something from a, you know, a thrift shop, a charity shop, yeah, and there's just something about it that you love the thing but you can kind of feel like, I don't feel it's quite attuned right now. It's not, I don't feel it's quite like, I feel like I want to put my own take on it. First step, cleanse the thing. And then you can kind of program it if you like, yeah? But just having that cleansing is rewriting things. There are some things you may not want to cleanse like that, like family heirlooms, yeah? There's an energy to it that that doesn't really require cleansing when you inherit that thing, right? With cleansing as well, what I really liked was that in Claude Le Couteau, as you know, I always bang on about Claude, in his Traditions of Household Spirits, he mentions about the building of something. And cleansing really is done before we build that magical energy, you know. He mentions about building in itself and that it was essentially a religious act, or we can call it a ritual act if we're not keen on the term religion, yeah. And he says that the practices of observing the phases of the moon and the direction of the wind and orientating or orienting the construction in accordance with the cardinal points all reveal that building a house was a religious act or rife with consequence. The fact is confirmed by a number of interactions and taboos or instructions and taboos. In Russia, the master builder had to purify himself before setting to work. So in summary, you know, why do we cleanse? Well, we cleanse to remove debris. We cleanse to make something safe for use. Um, we might use it to start fresh, that whole energetic eraser idea. And also, we might use it to make a separation between sort of the thing and its surroundings or the thing and other things, right? And, you know, while we're talking about other things, let's have a look at other people's takes, yeah, other witches' takes on the subject, because I always think it's worth getting a sort of broad take on things and just really understanding where the similarities are you know all the differences and there's a few different ones that I've uh, pulled info from for this video and the first one's Tucker and Penry and they have a brilliant book called Magic on the Breath very simple to, as a you know as a concept in terms of using your breath just your breath and they say that really all you need to cleanse is your breath and the intention to cleanse itself but that you can use certain rituals certain sort of things to really anchor it into reality if you're someone who wants to do stuff. And I don't tend to be that kind of person, really. Then in protection spells, Aaron Murphy Hiscock goes on to sort of define it quite nicely. They say, this is the book, they say to purify or sometimes to cleanse, something means to remove or transform the negative or undesired energy from it. And the cleansing is more often used to describe the physical level of transformation, while purification can refer to the energy state. And I thought that's quite interesting in terms of purification being something that is more spirit, more intangible, and cleansing being the actual act with the thing itself. But also that idea of removing and, uh, you know, and transforming is quite interesting. Deborah Lip, or Deborah Lip rather, compounds on this in their Magical Power for Beginners. You know, this is one of my books that I recommend checking out. And they say that when you consecrate, and again, they're using an alternative word here, consecration, purification, all that sort of stuff. They say when you consecrate an object, it can declare that segregation and, the, and begin the process of separating out that particular sort of energy. So they're saying that really what you're doing is sorting it to the energy that you want. They're saying that, that's not all a consecration does, of course. In general, it's a cleansing, there's our keyword, removing energy that is unwanted or unconnected to the tool's purpose. It also brings energy into the object. Now, I think that's interesting to have the idea about having the energy coming into an object. And I, I kind of get that it does when cleansing it, but I feel like cleansing is more of an in and out kind of process, that you're cleansing it and then it's ready for you to impart whatever you want to impart onto it. But it's interesting that the, both Aaron Murphy Hiscock and Deborah both say about it's getting rid of that unwanted or unconnected stuff. And if you think about it, you know, if you get something secondhand from a, you know, thrift shop, charity shop, that kind of thing, 
maybe you love the item but you just feel like mm, it's not quite uh, there's just something about it i just want to make it mine and so cleanse it do you know what i mean job done essentially cleanse it and it's ready for you to impart whatever it is you want to you know this kind of if it's a tool for instance whatever you want it to do if it's a decoration and you want it to be a something that wards the place right protects the place give it that mission but first of all cleansing it might be something that you're particularly keen on but if it's a something like an heirloom right family gift or something along those lines you wouldn't necessarily want to cleanse that because the energy that's inside that item or attached to that item is part of its gift in itself do you know what i mean so with heirlooms, heirlooms and things like that I wouldn't really cleanse them personally. I wouldn't sort of go for that. Well, if we look at cleansing, you know, we said it was a social act and also something that we can do kind of physically as well. I think it's interesting in traditions of household spirits uh, about ancestral law and practice. And obviously we're talking about surroundings here and cleansing our surroundings. He mentions about building. Uh, uh, building really is a big part of it and, and talks about how there's so many so many different things that go into actually the construction of a building or at least there was perhaps not so much now but i'm sure there are traditions that still continue in some fashion you know and if you think about that it's carrying someone over the threshold is a thing now the practices as he says here of observing the phases of the moon and the direction of with the wind and orienting the construction orienting the construction in accordance with the cardinal points all reveal that building a house was a religious act rife of consequence and that in russia the master builder had to purify himself before setting to work and i think that's was really interesting because it was this thing about really kind of washing themselves. Um, you know, Francis Conte indicates that he fasted, washed, put on a clean shirt and prayed. The cycle of times and, you know, the seasons, feast days, months and days also had to be taken into account. And I think that's really, really interesting, that, you know, this idea of cleansing for that act and that the fact is that they're building something there and they want the whole building to be blessed if we're doing some kind of consecration some kind of cleansing and you know we're looking to uh, build something then it makes sense to cleanse ourselves first doesn't it and then the thing so yeah i think that's super cool as a concept so really we've looked at the kind of theory of what you know cleansing is what other people think about cleansing and i think really that we can move towards the actual how to you know we've done the magical theory let's do the magical thing okay which is here's our magical thing to do or should i say things because we've got quite a few bits and bobs dotted around here and really i wanted to have this because we've talked about you know why cleansing is important and where we apply it but I wanted to talk about a few different options because each person is going to have their own thing that's going to work better for them and really how we go about it as well. So there's going to be different things here that correspond to different elements. So we'll just run through a few of them. And really, so let's start off with what we can do in a very simple, mundane sense because, you know, mundane and magical are great Com really great company to one another and alex Reck in their brain scan 34 a dabbler's week of diy witchery says clean your room and i really i really love this if you can get it do check out pbw witch shop and they're well worth having a look they're in the description as always but that's a really practical thing just cleaning you know if you can't clean a whole room clean a drawer if you can't clean a drawer dust the side off do you know what i mean little things because obviously everyone's got different energy levels different abilities that's absolutely fine if it's a full spring clean or full whatever clean it is fantastic that's great well done you but it doesn't have to be a huge overwhelming thing it can be bit by bit by bit so cleaning your space is fantastic you'll definitely feel better for it you'll move got some oxygen in your body all that kind of stuff right so with air we also have come to really you know think about oxygen we're thinking about breath aren't we and tucklin penry mentioned in terms of cleansing with your breath to cleanse with the out breath so breathing in and then breathing out blowing over the particular working or whatever it is you might want to get rid of you know in terms of the the space cleansing the space breathing it away and you know the other thing you can do when you're doing that breathing out is think about a certain color right yellow for instance being a good one because you're thinking about air and really you know you could use color itself to 
fill up a space, whether that's in your mind, you know, if you have a particular sort of colour you can think of that really makes you think of open space, breathing easy, then, you know, go with whatever suits you, really. But, you know, air is one of those elements that's fantastic for cleansing because we think about expansive, we think about flow, and, you know, sound is really a key part of air, isn't it? Air is that sort of vehicle for sound, the air travels, or rather sound travels through airways. And I find that bells are a fantastic thing to cleanse with because you're literally making or breaking up the sound waves. And I think that, especially high-pitched bells, they tend to be my preference because I feel like large, sort of deep bells are quite grounding, whereas high-pitched bells, as much as they kind of remind me of Yuletide and all that kind of thing, I feel like high-pitched bells are those things that are a little bit irritating, aren't they? Higher pitches, you know, they kind of tend to irritate us a little bit. And so it's my theory that they irritate anything that shouldn't be hanging around. And I think a good old shake of a rattle is also going to help you, you know, it's going to help you feel more energetic because you're doing something physically and it's that good old shake, you're kind of getting out the energy, raising energy as well. And um, and yeah, so bells are really something, you find them in various traditions really, but I find them to be particularly, uh, particularly helpful when it comes to cleansing. And, you know, moving on from the sort of, well, I suppose, I suppose technically incense, such as the frankincense I have in here, which is a good cleansing uh, incense. But, you know, obviously use whatever it is that's, uh, you know, your thing. Maybe there's a different incense that you like, but you could use incense to, you know, using that smoke to kind of fumigate the place. Uh, you know, you could use obviously dried leaves. And, you know, it's important to note that we should be avoiding those plants that are, you know, endangered or are perhaps from closed practices. You know, there are plenty of plants and plenty of things that we can use. Juniper, rosemary, you know, garden sage are fantastic, you know, things that we can use to really cleanse wherever it is, you know, our space, making little bundles of them. And, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, smoke cleansing is something that is quite a, a common practice throughout different places. You could call it fumigation and, um, and it's, yeah, it works it's the same sort of principle so speaking of herbs you know you can use herbs themselves as a like a strew room so to strew them or to have them strewn about so you might want to incorporate them in like a floor wash or something right so for instance in Breverton's herbal uh, they mention about let's see if I can fish it out for you they mentioned, oh, that's the Astrological Gods. This is actually a very good book. I would recommend it. Um, hyssop, right? They mentioned hyssop being strewn around and it being a cleansing herb and something that really is uh, quite a favoured thing for all things health and uh, and for really sort of getting rid of anything. But also you could look at things like peppermint. You think about menthol and, you know, if you... Breathing in menthol, it certainly clears out the old airwaves, doesn't it? Because we can look at science for our, you know, sources as well as the more mystical side of things. So really a good herb book will give you some ideas about what you can and, uh, and you know, perhaps you should explore with that. And, and really the... This kind of brings us to that earth idea, doesn't it? The earth element when it comes to cleansing. Uh, and that brings us to salt. Now salt really has been used throughout, you know, who knows how many thousands, potentially more than that years. Really, salt is a fantastic thing for cleansing. We we use it in things like saline solution, right? We use gargles of it for sore throats and such like. We know it's a good cleaning agent. Obviously, you know, if you're using salt, in your rituals, just be mindful that if you're putting it in washes or if you're putting it around on surfaces, you know, just be careful of what the surfaces are made out of so it doesn't cause any markings. And don't put it on the soil. The soil, obviously, is not a fan of salt. You know, you're better off if you're using salt as a, a kind of cleanser in terms of a circle, uh, especially outside. You'd rather be better off using something like eggshell, a piece of string that you can surround yourself with, or purely your own energy, really. I think that is the better sort of option there. Eggshells have been used throughout various different cultures. There are historical uh, practices with eggshells being used in, in thresholds throughout Europe and things like that. So uh, interesting alternative and, and safe for the soil generally. So salt really, I mean, I love a good sea salt because it incorporates the water element. And this one is also smoked. So this technically has the fire and the 
air element involved as well. Now, I wish you could smell this because it does smell just absolutely stunning. And the reason I find this one so particularly helpful, other than the wonderful smell, which definitely puts me in a ritual kind of mindset, is that it's smoked over oak, apple and cherry. And so it kind of, in my opinion, is imbued with not only the you know the smell or taste of those, but also the magical properties of it. So think about oak. Oak is a very protective plant isn't it and think you know what more could you want plant wise to smoke salt over and add that protection to something that is already such a protective thing in itself compounding it and really with sea salt what's lovely about it is you get these beautiful crystals and uh, they're just fantastic these little crystalline sort of structures and uh, it's a little bit like i think it's it bismuth that uh, looks like that crystal wise and obviously you know you can use crystals and things like that you could perhaps do a little circle of them i'm using crystals perhaps less so in my rituals and i think they're nice and shiny things but perhaps best bought second hand or at least from an ethical seller of some kind and i think it's worth trying not to you know buy everything under the sun when it comes to crystals and actually perhaps think about am I going to really use this? Is it just going to sit gathering dust? And, um, you know, has it been mined ethically? Um, is there, you know, that sort of thing? So I think, yeah, just being mindful with crystals that they're obviously things like clear quartz, black tourmaline, cleansing crystals that you might want to think of as really kind of getting in there and getting out. Perhaps black tourmaline more as a uh, defensive rather than cleansing sort of thing. But still, just consider with the crystals, are you going to use it more than once? And, you know, is it something that you could perhaps try and source ethically? And you could also make, you know, from the, you know, herbs and the thing, as I say, a self floor wash, a spray, you could use essential oils and make yourself like a little rollerball thing, cleansing yourself energetically, your aura, have this in your bag throughout the day and you could cleanse yourself with that. You might want to cleanse yourself using a sigil or cleanse your space using a sigil, right? And this could be written into the air or it could be something that you perhaps write on yourself with soap right so this is a soap that i made and it's very simple but it contains certain you know smells in there essential oils in there and colors that i associate with sort of growth and also you know that cleansing act so using it not only as a paintbrush if you will for the sigil of cleansing but literally cleansing myself at the same time so that can be your sort of uh, you know your personal yourself that you're cleansing you know that'd be your thing to go for You've also obviously got things like fire. Now, fire is an interesting one because with fire, you don't necessarily think of something or fire being clean. You think of it as destructive. But actually, fire, when it clears out a place, you know, it really does go for it. And there's a sense of renewal there with the ash sometimes being most fertile places, of quite ashy places. Now, the thing with fire, obviously, is just to be careful with fire safety. Uh, and also, really, you know, think about the sun as, you know, a way of incorporating the fire element, perhaps popping something in sunlight, obviously making sure it's not going to fade or catch fire or anything like that. Um, you could also do the same with moonlight, for instance. That's absolutely valid too. But, yeah, fire is one of those things that's really cool. And I, I tell you what fascinates me is that there was a tale from the bubonic plague where a i think it was a priest or one of the popes who surrounded himself with two kind of fiery you know torches and a load of herbs and things and because of the sheer heat of those torches he kept away most of the rats and therefore the fleas that would have got him and he actually survived and he died a bit later i can't remember what of but um at least initially, it didn't die of the plague in, in quite a significant area. So, yeah, flame is one of those things that literally keeps away stuff that we don't necessarily want. If we, you know, we cleanse stuff with boiling water, don't we? We think uh, of that as a, a good cleansing agent. Uh, and water itself, really, you know, water is something that is a fantastic cleanser. And I think what's great about water is that it is so, it's one of those things that you can, cleanse yourself with it internally and externally so obviously you know using soaps and such like using floor washes and you know speaking words over your water uh, i think is you know something that's quite interesting there's precedence in having runes around the rim of cups and things like that so you could perhaps draw on with a ceramic pen some runes around your particular cup something of good health or something like that you know for instance you might want to go for 
fair who for wealth you know drinking in that wealth maybe you want to go for ansu's for breath or perhaps gibu for um you know gifting in exchange now with water one of the things that you can do is sprinkle it over your surroundings you might want to use something like this like a little twig and you can literally splatter your surroundings with it now i've been looking at terms for really for cleansing and things like that because because i was really thinking you know what terms can we use especially as witches like myself who are non-theist who don't necessarily want to use particularly religious terms like um you know within certain christian practices there's things called uh, or this particular act of sprinkling with water uh is called to a uh, spurge um and so it's like a, a spurging really uh, and you have an aspergillum which is a tool to asperge with and, and so i was thinking okay so what what good word can i use well actually there's a word that's not too far off from that term but without the associations from the church itself and that is sparge right now sparge if you're a home brewer you might have come across this term and it means to scatter or to sprinkle or to bespatter and you know the terms you would how you use it because i always think it's worth learning how we use it because new words can be a little bit like you know what on earth am i going to do with that what's correct and what's not but you could say a sparger this could be the sparger and this act would be sparging and once it's done it would be sparged right so that's a term we could potentially use as a ritual term for the act of really cleansing our place with water with a sort of ritual kind of thing and obviously this could be something different in norse culture um really you see this sprinkling or sprinkling happen with blood uh, in the bloat which was the ritual uh, thereof now the other thing obviously this is your surroundings but we can look at another term which is ablution now ablution it's from latin and it comes from meaning away or wash to wash away and this gives us a direction if we're cleansing we might want to move things in as really an anti-clockwise kind of idea or at least away from us if we're sweeping for instance because obviously you see this is not just something that you know can sprinkle but it could also represent a broom for instance and we can use brooms to sweep literally or figuratively over something but really this is something i find quite fascinating because from the alchemy perspective it's meant purification by using liquids uh, and purification we saw that term didn't we with one of the uh, books we were looking at uh, but this specifically is is quite fascinating to me as a use for yourself and so really this i feel is a way to turn cleansing into a personal ritual your ablutions are something we often think about when we go into the toilet washing your face washing our hands you know washing our teeth or brushing our teeth you know before rituals, I tend to do one or all three of these because what I want to do is make sure that my hands are clean, they're cleansed, ready to go, that my face is washed so that I feel like I can, you know, speak and present myself in a, in a proper way. And, and with the speech side of things, you know, brushing your teeth, it means there's nothing hanging around there that kind of is polluting your words or, or slightly twisting your intent. You can speak from a very clean, purified, uh, cleansed mouth. And so really, what you might want to consider doing perhaps on a day of the week that aligns with water, for instance, um, or indeed on, you know, Saturday, for instance. Saturday is about banishing with the associations of Saturn. Not only that, but historically it was known as washing day uh, to the Norse. Um, and that's quite interesting because the Norse were big fans of washing once a week. And when they came over to places like England, the Christians were very upset because they didn't wash and uh, and the Norse did, the Vikings, if you like, although that is a profession, um, but uh, the Norse did wash and they were complaining that the women were very much attracted by them because they, I guess they just didn't smell as bad. <laughs> but think about it in terms of ritual aspects, you know, on a Saturday, washing day, then you could do an ablution and sparge, right? So you could do your ablution and your sparge and if you don't sparge anywhere else i'd probably recommend your threshold so wherever your door is that you cross the most so normally that's a front door but if you're in a flat obviously it could be you know your flat door if it's a house share you know etc etc or um you know apartment whatever it is you want to call it 
And I think really to go through your ablutions barge is a great way to incorporate this very simple act of cleansing into your day to day, not just as a precursor to that juicy magical act, you know. So consider that. Consider is there a day of the week where you could put in some time to go through some ritual cleansing, maybe adding some salt and some herbs to the bath itself. If you can't bathe yourself for whatever reason, a mobility issue or something like that, then you know you could use a spray. That's something that I know the Geordie Witch recommends. There's a spray that you could spray around yourself, around the room, very easy peasy and very fine so you don't have to expend energy or movement in terms of cleaning it up. And sprays are a great option for folks and you know really you could again as if as though you you know would use an essential oil to rub onto yourself to cleanse yourself as you're sort of wandering about you know the town or out outdoors you could also take a spray with you as well so hopefully with this cleansing it gives you an idea remember really when we're cleansing we're looking to either remove something to separate it out from something that's mundane to really make it kind of a sacred thing or to reset it yeah that kind of energetic eraser there so really i hope that this gives you some you know some things to play with do play with cleansing a little bit work out what works for you what's realistic you know can your cleaning schedule for your home become a magical act with just a few little tweaks a few things that you do you know maybe when you're cleaning you might have a little candle on or something you know because you can be present in the rooms and you can have that burning so lots of ideas how do you go about cleansing do you keep it simple do you have something a bit more complex you know, I think really everyone is so varied that it just uh, depends on the individual, doesn't it? So hopefully this gave you a good deep dive and uh, yeah, love to hear your thoughts. So in the meantime, health and wealth. <laughs>